Yeah, well, Ganymede doesn't want us to talk about his strategy, so, you know, we're going to have a little EMP from him. No. Yeah, so, of know. course, but this is kind of cool. You got a new a new thing going on here tonight, so I'm excited. Cool. Yeah, well, in Jesus' name, we'll just start, but, you know, um, it's just time is, I don't think anybody else is going to show up, does It's okay. I'm going to record it anyway. Hopefully, we, have, we, we get into some good stuff. Um, you know, theme of tonight is the word that came up over the last two days has been patterns, you know, uh, and, you know, it, it comes about because, you know, in, in, in my own life, I have a pattern that was, has been really binding me really my whole life. And just over the last couple of days began to rear its ugly head again. And, uh, uh, and wow. I, started, I really started to move in a negative way into that pattern again, you know. Mm. And yeah, and it was interesting because uh, an old old friend of mine, I you know, I, I've mentioned him before, my friend Joe. Uh, I went to kindergarten with his brother, you know, and Joe and I met in the '80s. You know, we came to the prayer meeting that we had. I told you guys about the Catholic Church. We had <laughs> we had a New Testament meeting in, in the basement of the Catholic Church, and he got some inner healing. He got some primal therapy and got and all kinds of good stuff. And we've been really closer than brothers all these years. And uh, he, uh, I was talking to him, and uh, he had a really strong word from God about ending the pattern and really in his love for me which is, is tremendous that's one of the things god is showing me about breaking our patterns that really the energy is love ultimately uh, wow amen yeah and you know when somebody loves you and they're giving you the word of god and revealing your patterns and you know it was funny because in the conversation, God reminded me of a cartoon. I'm not going to get into the whole thing. It's a little personal, but it, I was affected by a cartoon character early on in my life. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, almost, it's pretty funny when, you know, well, one day I'll reveal the whole thing. But, but it's interesting because I had a dream the night before. Uh, something happened. Uh, and... I was upset and I was in the guest bedroom trying to get back to sleep. I was having a rough night up and down, up and down and got to be about five, six o'clock in the morning. And I hear this rat or something it sounded like it was under the bed, you know, and it was scratching and everything. And, and it, you know, it chased me out of the room and whatever it was. And then later on, as I was getting into this problem that was, that, that was besetting me and I was falling victim to the pattern again. Uh, you know, God brought it back to me, you know, the rat in the basement, you know, and what he was showing me was the pattern in my basement, which is our unconscious, you know, basement of our heart, so to speak, and mind, and how that had to be dealt with, so to speak. And, and to my brother's, you know, uh, strong words and, and, and love, I said, no, you know, I have to do, I have to do the right thing in God here. And, and I did. And, and when I did it, I felt like I had shocked the enemy because I broke a pattern. And what the interesting thing is that that night, uh, I had another bad night because sometimes I have, you know, I have a certain condition that can keep me up all night. And uh, usually mm -hmm. God uses that. He uses that. I, I, I listen to hours and hours of teachings and I study and I do a lot of stuff alone at night. Which, and I know sometimes purposely God will have me go through a teaching. And I was going through like this, you know, Kevin is a die. He has like two, three hour teachings because uh, yes. that's what he mm -hmm. does. And What's interesting, because one of the reasons he does it is that, like he was sharing in this one, and I'm going to send it out in the link. 
it's, I think it's an important lesson for all of us. And it really all webbed together and knitted together. I saw the pattern, you know, I recognize the patterns because there's good patterns and bad patterns. Everything in God is patterns, fields. It's the way the universe is constructed. You know what God does, you know, mm -hmm. but Kevin was talking about uh, how the enemy likes you and your patterns because then you're predictable. Mm -hmm. yeah. wow. that, really, that really struck me. Yeah. You know, wow. And, yeah. And you know what? We we already have that tendency from the archetypes in us, the pain in us, the early childhood memories, whatever our thing is, and you all have it. You don't tell me you don't. You all have what, what it says in Hebrews is the besetting sin. Lay aside, it says in Hebrews, lay aside, you know. Like it's John, this reminds me of this reminds me of what you, you brought up a couple of weeks ago, you brought up mindsets. That's kind of like patterns. They're the houses we live in, right? And like yeah. to repent in Hebrews means to burn down the house. So I just remembered that this this kind yeah, of is the Hebrew yep. word. Yeah, you got the Hebrew word for re repent is shuv. Okay, so it's a shin which looks like fire. It's that W looking Hebrew word. I can't draw on the screen right now. I don't think, but right. Uh, yeah, it's shuv. It's a it's a fire in a house. Shuv. Right. The B is a bait, which is a house. I am. I may show you another Hebrew uh, later, but so literally, and that's what's so beautiful about the Hebrew language. It's not esoteric. It's very concrete. It's very black and white. Uh, right. So in the Hebrew mind, to repent is to burn the house down. And, and Lawrence making some of my points. And we'll get to it. The, mind, the mindset is the house that we live in. Yep. Yes. Uh, and the scripture I didn't write down. How many people know in Proverbs, it says the wealth of the rich is their fortified city. They run into it and think they'll be safe. See, that's the mindset. Yep. But the next verse, and that's the way Proverbs is written, you know, in doubles, in doublets, you know, in two sides of things. Then the next verse says, but the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and find safety. Mm -hmm. Or Shabbat, which would be rest, right? Amen. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, and it, you know, if you took the shuv, Shabbat begins with the, <laughs> with the shuv. Shuvat, right? So if you take the repentance, return, right, to the, mm -hmm. Shabbat ends in what letter, guys? T, correct? Yeah. Well, in, in Paleo Hebrew, the Tav, which is the last letter in Hebrew, is is literally two sticks making a cross. What are the odds that the last letter, which is the culmination of the Aleph Bet or the alphabet in Hebrew, would be a wooden cross? Okay, we won't get into mm. this. I'll show you a little bit. That's Paleo Hebrew, which means the Hebrew that came before you know before the Babylonian times, the times when they started making these, this Aramaic kind of cuneiform type of stylistic writing, it was pictures. God always spoke in pictures. Like hieroglyphics. So, so the word Shabbat in pictures says, return to the covenant or return to the cross. Mm. What's a better, you know, what's a better picture of repentance, you know, than that? So, but learn, you know, uh, Going back to the name of the Lord in, 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 you know, in the scripture, your name is not just what they call you. Your name and, and you know, there's, does anybody in the group ever kind of like studied their name and got revelations from God concerning it? 
we used to do that in some groups. I tell like a new group, I tell them, "Give me your name," and I'll kind of show. I'll try to tell you, you know, what the name might mean or like that. And there's a whole bunch of stuff with that. But Adam, you know, uh, you know, the rabbis taught that that when Adam named the animals, that he knew them, that he had an intimacy with them, and the names are very much. Uh, characteristic and they hold a power. You know, my name is Yachanan, is John, Joseph. So Yachanan means the gracious gift of God. Joseph means God adds. My last name is Scalzo. Now Scalzo means shoeless. Well, without shoes, <laughs> right? And uh, there was a time in my life when God changed my name. Uh, very one of my cycles is really cycles of weakness. I get to extremely weak, lowly places of helplessness and hopelessness. And in one of those places, uh, I took the world on my shoulders, business wise, family wise, and everything else. And everything was going wrong. And I hit, you know, I, I, I just hit a real bottom. In, uh, I was in Brooklyn working like four o'clock in the morning and the machine wasn't working. And I, you know, when you, when everything just goes and you just don't have another ounce of energy to go forward. Yeah. Luckily I had a friend, my friend, we called him Jack the prophet. He's he a guy that I befriended. I used to meet him for breakfast every, every week. And I will tell you, that's a good pattern. It's a good pattern to set meetings with spiritual brothers and sisters on a regular basis and share a meal mm -hmm. with them. That, yep. that probably saved my life to a large degree. And I had nowhere to go and I, I just was done. You know when you're done. Mm, you're just done. Absolutely. And I walked in and, you know, he had a job cleaning a place. Uh, he was a janitor, so he was. I knew he'd be there six o'clock in the morning, whatever. I went, and I walked in. I sat in the chair. I said, uh, "I, I, I can't talk. Just pray for me. I can't talk." And, and Jack, very visionary, he said, uh, "He said, who's Michael? The Lord is calling you, Michael." I said, that's good. Even the Lord forgot my name. Isn't that great? No. <laughs> 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 no wonder I'm in a bad mood. The Lord doesn't even know my name. But, uh, but seriously, and uh, he saw Jesus on the cross, and he said he's calling you, but he's calling you Michael. And Within a, a minute, I remembered that I was raised Catholic, guys, okay? And at confirmation, at confirmation, you choose a name, your confirmation name, your God name. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, I, and God immediately, he lights this stuff up in you. You know, he lights it up. Mm-hmm, well... And immediately, I, I went back and said, oh, that's my confirmation name, Michael. And then the Lord will ask you a question, or it's kind of a conversation, but it's quiet. And he said, you remember why you, you know why I chose Michael? From the famous Renaissance painting of Michael the Archangel with the big wings and the sword down defeating Satan. Oh, wow. Okay. You see it on some trucks to this day. There's a trucking company that has that right on the one on the door, the driver's door on each side. It's a crazy thing. Now, I was into Marvel comic books and everything like that. So I chose that name. Michael the Archangel was defeating the devil. And here God is calling me Michael. I'm at my lowest possible spirituality my lowest humanity. And I, I put this together 
you know, and what else does God say? Well, that's because, John, when you're weak, I'm strong. I'm the one who defeats the Amen. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that was, you know, that was many, many years before I had my crash. That was many, many years. See, God speaks to you. He leaves little breadcrumbs, patterns in your life, early patterns. You, you develop negative ones, but you also develop spiritual patterns that keep coming back in circles and cycles. And you begin to recognize them. And when he raised me from the dead from my depression in 2008, and I was starting to minister, and I was ministering in, in uh, I was... I was kind of discipling two prisoners in a sex offenders prison in New Jersey. And they, I, I wound up helping them. They needed musical equipment. So I got together with the church and we found a lot of used equipment and some new, and we donated a bunch of equipment to the music ministry. And so they invited me. Uh, the chaplain says, or the director says, why don't you come to a Sunday service? You know, we'd like to thank you and you can see what, 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 you know, what your equipment is doing. Sure. So I'm walking, you know, I'm walking to the prison. I'm in the parking lot, headed for the front door. And from my right side behind me, this giant white truck, which looked like it came out of heaven. It was a white tractor trailer with all the bells and whistles, the chrome, nothing written on the whole thing, an immaculate, beautiful white tractor trailer. On the door is Michael the Archangel defeating the enemy. What? Wait. 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 <laughs> and the guy rolls down the window and he says to me, Is this a production way? That was the address. Now, I'm a guy with symbols. Eight is the number of new beginnings. Production way? Are you out of your mind? <laughs> that was the address? I, I just shake my head. I think, yeah. And he takes off. Well, now, I'm so filled with the Spirit, I can't wait to get into that service. See, because God brought a pattern. And when they asked me to get up and just say a couple of words, they wanted to thank me. I told that story because I just told you. The Holy Spirit hit the prison, that room in the chapel, so hard that I almost couldn't get out of there. I almost had to pray for every man. They rushed up to the front of the altar. And you know what happened from that? I didn't find out until years later. They actually said, don't get this guy in here anymore. <laughs> I heard this from the one of the prisoners. They said, John, you know what they said? They don't want you here anymore. You stirred up too much stuff. <laughs> now, believe it or not, I went there into a five-year ministry. Okay, I went into a five-year ministry in 2015 now. After I had a third of my stomach removed, my gallbladder removed, a third of my duodenum, a third of my pancreas. And an eight and a half hour Whipple procedure, I weighed on 140 pounds. I lost 40 pounds. And I was once again at one of my weakest states. God sent me back into that prison to minister for five years. Wow. So I didn't mean to talk about this, but what I'm bringing to you is patterns. Good patterns and bad patterns. And... How we really need. Now, if you remember in both stories, I had a man in my life who I could sit across the table with and who could tell me the truth. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you, if you want to break patterns, we need that type of fellowship. Yeah. Now, if any, I'd like to. 
I want to. And have you guys chat about that. Yeah, I mean, I also, this is Tina. I also want to say that, you know, I'm 60 years old. So, um, you know, Jesus at this point in time is lighting up a pattern for me. You know, uh, and, and sometimes you just don't even realize you're in a pattern, whether it's with your marriage or in your work or with your children. And it's really important important to spend some time with the Lord so he can show you these things. And um, it's really beautiful that he does. And then when you have people in your life that you can go to, that's even better. You know, in terms of trying to get clarity on things and break better. Because ultimately it's a spiritual thing as well as a soul thing. I think. Mm-hmm. Tina, were you talking? I went. Can't hear you anymore. I'm sorry, my my microphone. I hit it off by mistake. I was oh, saying yeah. I have a. Yeah, I have a tendency to run from things, and if they don't work out right away, I get frustrated, and I just say, you know, enough of this, and I just move away from it, you know. And um, and and I've had a lot of other patterns in my life that the Lord has worked on uh, with me. Um, but I think it's really important, you know, this time it was different when I saw this particular pattern, John and I were talking about it, how the devil uses it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? So how my patterns are so predictable that it can be easily manipulated. And that was, you know, when John and I were talking about it, that was really a you know, big revelation. And then we went to the Bible and we were able to see it clearly in a lot of different scriptures. You know, whether it's renew your mind and uh, what, what, I'm sorry, I don't know, the, is that Colossians? No, in the Romans. In the Romans. You know, which if you want, if you look at the screen, let, let's just follow your lead. I got a pattern in Hebrew there. I wrote down Hebrew. We'll do that. Let's see. Uh, here it says, uh, okay. Um, I, beseech, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable spiritual service, not be conformed to this world. There it is. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good, acceptable, and perfect. And we all know that, you know, some translations say don't be, don't be, Formed in the mold of the world. Don't be put in the mold. That's the pattern. The world has a pattern and it wants to mold you in. And the enemy wants you in a pattern. You know, what's so cool is I realized today, Jesus was unpredictable. I mean, you ever go to a healing seminar when they're trying to figure out how does Jesus heal? He never healed the same way twice. It's true. And we, we will talk about in a minute of where the, the pattern, what is the pattern really, and how, if you, I don't know if you get the implication or it's starting to creep on you. The pattern is the law. The law is a pattern. It's a pattern by which we try to manipulate things and God and our holiness. But God doesn't want us to live by the pattern. He wants us to live in union with him. The pattern is something we get married to. We're in a relationship with it. And the enemy knows it. And it's an adulterous relationship. And some of our patterns might even look holy. But Jesus was unpredictable. 
And you never knew, you know, one time he's making mud healing somebody, the other time, you know, he spit in their eye, or, you know, then one time he never touched anybody, got healed. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And with the woman of, with the blood, yeah, she touches right. him. She touches him. And I think the principle that explains this best is when Jesus said, and he really only said this pretty much in John, but it's it's colors everything that Jesus ever did. Remember what Jesus said, I never do anything except I what? Except from the God, from the Father. Unless Does what I he speak hear the Father do? Says what he hears the Father say. Yeah. I never do anything. So guess what? Jesus didn't know what he was doing. Mm-hmm. Now, you see, guys, can we do that? Yeah. Yep. Now, if Christ dealt with the Father that way when he was on earth, where is he now? He's in your heart on earth. Mm-hmm. And Galatians says that he's crying, Abba. The spirit of his son is in us. It says, because since your sons, Galatians 4, God put the spirit of his son in your heart, mm-hmm. which cries, Abba, la, Abba, la, Abba, all day for your whole lifetime. Your heart is crying, Abba. Mm-hmm. So as Jesus, can we... Except that as Jesus, since he's in our body now with a new ministry. See, the book, the gospel of Luke was 33 and a half years of Jesus in a Jewish body that was crucified. Then resurrected. Then in the book of Acts, Luke writes, my former treatise, O Theophilus, that I wrote, that was Luke, you know, you know. Mm-hmm. It's the same story. Do you, do you know the book of Acts? They say runs about 33 and a half years. So it's like the really? fifth gospel. It's like the fifth gospel. Yeah, I feel that. And the only difference is Jesus switches bodies. Mm-hmm. The only thing that's different is he switches bodies. Mm. Mm-hmm. And and I call that the Whoopi Goldberg effect. Now you say, <laughs> yeah. You know, and God, God, you God shared that with me in two thousand eight. When one morning I got up, I tell you guys, you know, you I do a centering prayer, which I, we'll talk about too. One real great weapon of God against patterns is centering prayer. You see, but John, that's a pattern. Yeah, good one. It's a good habit. There are good, good ones habit. and bad ones. Mm-hmm. Right. And God told me that I was undisciplined in 2008 and it was not successful because of my patterns. You see? But in centering prayer, what's different is contemplative prayer is we're not praying. So we're breaking that pattern of constantly asking God talking to him, questioning, whatever it is, that's that's part of prayer. But we deliberately hold ourselves, right? We, we hold ourselves in his presence knowing he's holding us. We're practicing letting him love us, letting him worry about our lives. We're practicing releasing ourselves from our patterns of self-preservation. See? Yeah. We're, we're doing it. We're exercising a muscle that resists our ordering God around, ordering anything, or even thinking that we know what we need. We're practicing be, doing what Jesus did, which was he just continually looked for the guidance from his father. And sometimes, remember, he went off to be alone, remember? They found him in a lonely place praying, remember? 
because everybody else's patterns were screwing him up. He couldn't hear. He's getting, you know, he's getting overload. And so one morning when I came out of, of, of not praying for 20 minutes and letting God pray over me and hold me and all this other stuff. And, and let me tell you something to give you advice. Feelings have nothing to do with it. Whether you feel the presence of God or not is baloney. Your, your, your feeling doesn't make God present. You actually can't not be present, you know, but it's a great exercise to be able to have faith with no feelings. So we don't get caught up into some of the extremes that many of you guys know, right? So, so I would go for 20 minutes, say the Our Father, and then God would get chatty. Then I would get teachings. Then now he would share stuff with me because that's a different time now. And one morning he says to me, ghost. I said, ghost? What are you talking about? <laughs> And then I remembered, he's, he's talking about the movie. And that's all he says to me. But that's part of the game, guys. Because it's the glory of God to conceal the matter as the glory of kings to search about. <laughs> and he likes playing hide-and-go-seek with us, little monkeys. He, he loves to look on our face when we get it. If he gave us everything, he'd never get that. Right. Right? He likes to play. He, he loves to play surprise party. That's why he's silent so much. He can't share anything with us blabbermouths. We give away the surprise party. <laughs> it's you know. So one morning he says ghost, and I'm thinking, okay, ghost, and I get it. He said, oh, oh, okay. So now he's telling me meditate. Now here's the uh, this is what meditate means. Now you can go into meditation. Contemplation has nothing to do with you. Meditation. God says, look at something from every angle. Or chew the cud, which is what it means in Hebrew. Meditate means to, literally means to chew the cud like the cow. So I start chewing the cud, looking at the movie, and all of a sudden it pops. In, in physics, they call it a quiff pop in quantum mechanics. You get a revelation. You guys live on revelation, don't you? That's the only thing you can live on. Mm. If you're not having revelation in your life, all you got is religion. Mm -hmm. The father breaks the patterns by speaking to you, a rainbow. That's how patterns get broken. And I realized instantly, oh, Patrick Swayze is Jesus. His wife is us. Well, Whoopi Goldberg is us as Christians. I never saw the movie. You I never saw it. Ghost? Nope. You know that, that I, I've asked people in crowds, I've never had anybody not see it, and I actually had to go to a point when I was sharing this for many years, because it, it really liberated some people. It's a shame. It's you know, Dave, you, uh, you saw it? What's that? I mean, I, okay. Is that the movie that they talk about, Ditto? Which one? Where, is is that where, where Patrick Swayze says Ditto? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Right? yes. Uh, That's the movie. Okay, I didn't see that one. Well, he dies, right? He dies. Right, he He's, dies. And, so, and then, he yeah, so he proves who he is by saying yes. something that she knows and he and then nobody else knows. That's it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, hey, so, yes. Yeah. That was great. He, yes. Well, guess, yeah. Now you're going to have to watch it, you know, with Cindy. <laughs> yep. I, had a, I, gave, I was on yeah, like a can. Patrick Crazy honeymoon with God for a while because then he gave me Dirty Dancing and he told me that's how he wants me to work with him. He said, remember Dirty Dancing when, when she was trying to let me lead you. Yeah, let me lead you. Yeah, look let in me lead my you. eyes. Look in my eyes. Hmm. And that's what God says in Psalms. Well, I will teach you, instruct you in the way you should go. I will guide you with mine eye. Right? So here, in, in the ghost movie, okay, the enemy kills the husband. Right? Now, you know, uh, Demi Moore, we actually represent, you know, the bride of Christ at that point. The church, the bride of Christ in a sense. 
Whoopi's a, one of us, a minister, a prophet, but she's a phony. She's a con man. But the bottom line is she had a gift. So she represents us Christians who were all sinners, but we got gifts. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know? And, yeah. and so at the end of the movie, Patrick Swayze, she's the only one who can see Patrick Swayze, so he's got to deal with her. It's like God's dealing with us silly prophets. You know what I'm saying? He's stuck. He's got to get a message because the evil guy, the Satan figure, is coming to kill her because he stole the money and she's figuring it out. And so to get to the door, as you're remembering, and she won't answer. She won't let her in. So remember, he also, he floats the penny first. So sometimes God gets our attention through a miracle. It's not the message, the miracle. It's just, what does a miracle do? A miracle tells us, don't trust your own understanding. Mm -hmm. See, most of the time, miracles are judgment. They're not, you know, miracles never made believers out of the Jews in the wilderness. <laughs> but when she, the other thing is, to, is what you said, with the, he said something only he and her could possibly know. Yeah. That's prophecy. That's yeah. the purpose of prophecy. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So prophesy to someone, they say, He knows me. He gets me. He knows me. I'll let him in. I'll open the door. She opens the door. And here comes the exciting part. You ready? Then the music comes, and, and, and Whoopi knows what Patrick wants now. She looks at him. She says, okay, go ahead, use me. She plops down on the sofa, and Patrick Swayze jumps into her body. Then you hear the beautiful unchained melody playing, oh, my, my, you know, and they're dancing. And guess what? Jesus is dancing with his bride because we said, use my body. Well, it is. How about this? Romans 12. Therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice. The movie goes. There you go. I have shared that with people that never understood Christianity until I told them Christianity through the movie Ghost. I swear to you. I had a young woman that when I shared that with her, she looked at me. She she had been a nominal Christian her whole life, raising her, whatever it was. I was to perform her wedding, and she didn't even know me because her her uh, fiance, her you know future husband, was my son's best friend. And she's trying to kind of grill me. It's like, who the heck are you doing this wedding? You know, John Scalzo, the carpet cleaner, maniac, or whatever you are. And uh, <laughs> I told her the ghost story. She turned and she looked at me. I'll never forget. It was in my kitchen in Jersey. She said to me the strangest thing almost almost I've ever heard. She looked at me and she said, you put a mantle on me. I said, what? She said, you put a mantle on me. I said, do you understand what you're saying? And she did. When we understand that he's literally wants to use our body, to touch other members of the body of Christ and the world. You've been given a mantle, a ministry, an empowering ministry is a mantle, you know, the mantle from Elijah to Elisha. And you get a double portion if you're there when he dies. What does that mean? If you continue to see the death of Christ, you'll live the life of Christ and you'll have a double portion. It's always about us and Jesus. And I will tell you, sometimes people have heard the gospel so much in church or in the Bible that sometimes they need to see it through a movie. And um, through something different, you need to break that pattern. You get stuck. Yeah. Well, that's what happens. A mindset comes. Oh, I know that. 
And you know, God rebuked me on a pattern. I had a pattern when God lit me up in 2008. He said, John, you know, I mean, he gave me some rough words. You know, he said, John, you're a smart, wise guy. You know everything. You know nothing. You don't do it. You don't follow through. You have, you know, you don't have the discipline. Uh, you know, and, and he said to me, and you think you're too good for the Gospels. He, you know, he said that to me. Wow. I'm just remembering it now. This is just spontaneous. I don't know. He's, that's what he said to me. You think you're too good. Yeah, because it's baby food. See, I'm so smart. And he rebuked me. And he said... I want you in the Gospels every day, John. And he meant like the, my morning session with him, you know, with the um, centenary and stuff like that. He says, you know why? He says, in everywhere else in the Bible, it talks about Jesus. But in the Gospels, he's on every page. Yeah. That's right. He told me, you haven't begun to understand the Gospels. <laughs> yeah. And I'll tell you what, he was right. I started doing the Gospels every morning, and I had a group of people. We used to do it. I used to write out or read, you know, like Matthew 1, and we'd do it together. And it changed our lives just going through the Gospels, right through, like, you know, like morning reading. Because I, I like to read the Scripture before we do, you know, the centering prayer, whatever like that. And just do what they call Lexio Divina, just... Speak the word, listen to the word. Don't analyze it. See, guys like me, we have to have a time of not analyzing, of not trying to come up with a spiritual principle, of just kissing the word, loving it, feeling it, because that's him. You know, that's why he told me, anoint your Bible with something that smells good. I use patchouli. You should anoint your Bible with smelly oil. You should cover it in something comfortable like leather. It, it, he wanted me to exercise all my senses in my experience with my Bible. Because, you know, you know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. That, you know, that, that transformed my understanding of him. And uh, anyway, somebody want to share concerning that? Anything pop up on you? Sneak it in a couple of macaronis. Um, well, now how many people can relate to uh, what we're saying about the patterns? I'm sorry, I came in, I was having trouble logging into the meeting, um, so I'm not sure where this started but um if somebody if you could just refresh me um i i kind of came in close to eight i was kind of into it a little bit so just hang on like you know just okay yeah you yeah, it's, it will be recorded you can you know you'll get it on youtube later on yeah, if someone want to share something that they can think of in their lives where it might involve a pattern and how the they're so hard to break. They're so hard to. I would say like when in my last marriage and even growing up with my dad, um, mm -hmm. always getting condemned about stuff and like feeling like everything was my fault. So yeah. when something bad would happen, I would like say, oh, you know, the, the, the whole thing would run through my head like, Oh, I did this. Now this is going to happen, and then I I would like be talking myself into yeah, like getting upset and getting like talking down myself and everything, and um yeah, and then I would just be like totally upset. And then one day the Lord, I was just praying about it, and the Lord's like, the way to get over that is just the same way you got in it. You just say the opposite things. And he told me to just to say, you know, like scriptures, like what I am in Christ, how God sees me, not, right. you know, condemning. And 
I, I started just like talking backwards from what I was saying and the whole thing just switched totally around and I was like in a whole different state of mind yeah. and it was really cool. It really worked. It was so, it was really cool to me. But you needed to see the pattern. <clears throat> oh yeah. Yep. And you know what? If, if you don't see it and others aren't around to help you or whatever, we can go on for years. Oh yeah, I did. Oh, oh yeah. And, the enemy, yeah. and didn't the enemy know exactly the two or three things that would put you there? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm hmm. Cindy, thank you for sharing that. Um, I think that one of the things that I have as a pattern that has been shaken is obsession. I I obsess about things. You know, if something happens and I don't let it go. And it's mm -hmm. attitudinal. I mean, it's, uh, I've all, I had always been that way and I'm working on that now. And God's shown me that it, it's born out of um, worry and fear. And when you live there, you're, you're, you're projecting yourself into the future, right? So if you're not fully in the present, like if you're always angry, yeah, well, I, I learned point. this in the hour not. Good point. Remember you, that. Yes. You live. You live. If you're always, if you're always anger, angry, you're living in the past. You're stuck there. You haven't forgiven. You haven't moved on. And if right. you're always fearful and and worrying, you're projecting into the future, which you don't even have a clue what's going to be anyway. What we have to do is you got to you got to live in the present, man. Live one day at a time. Mm -hmm. And ironically, as the Bible says. You can only experience Jesus in the present, right here, right now. Well, what do you know? And that's the thing. So obsession is a form of worry. Worry is a form of living in the future, which you have no business even trying to figure out what that is because you don't know. We, we really do need to strive to re remember to stay present because that's the place where we get to experience Jesus. You can't experience Jesus in the future. He knows what the future is, but we do not. So that's, that's, that's you can the see, thing about a pattern. You can, see, yeah. you can see a pattern in the past. Yep. Even with you God. Can. And that's that's yeah. how you become aware. You can, you can see a pattern that. in the past, good and bad with God. You can see a pattern in the future with or without God, good or bad. But God you is... experience the, now, yeah. You can experience the past or the future. Mm -hmm. and, and so the enemy was constantly wanting us to either dwell in both areas because that's God is not there. That's right. He's, He's right. only in the present with you right here, right now. The rain of words. Right here, right now with him, the, the enemy doesn't have power over you because you're right there with Jesus. Him. Right. That's why I love the, 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 the unpredictability of circle meetings, whether where they were, and I loved them in the prison for five years. I mean, I would have paid to go in there. I told the guys, never thank me for doing this. I'm doing this because I'm a <laughs> mm -hmm. I would pay money, I, and I meant it. I would pay money to come into our Thursday night meeting and sit with 18 guys, 12 guys, because it's unpredictable. The voice of God can come from a source you don't expect it. Mm -hmm. And that usually is the word that knocks you out or, or gives you that life that you need, the revelation of Christ that you need. Because otherwise, you're all just trying to be a Christian by holding your breath and keeping the law. Right. And you, you right. have no way to do it. And that's what Paul was doing. And he comes to that realization. He says, this law, this pattern, this is not working for me. It's actually making me more fond of sin. Mm-hmm. Right. And then he yeah. finally gets exasperated. Who's going to deliver me from this body of death? He ends Romans seven and in first, and then he goes to Romans eight. Thanks be to God. It's already done. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free. So he, the only thing the law could do is enhance his sin, inflame it. Yep. Right. And and what is the answer? To walk in the spirit. Mm -hmm. but that's mm. what Lauren is saying. Just like 
we're the fragrance of Christ. I think I've shared that with you guys. Have I? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Since yeah, we, for sure. Our fragrance can't be remembered. It can't be remembered. It can't be projected. I can't tell you. Uh, imagine to, for tomorrow what a strawberry smells like. Try it. Can't. Try, try to imagine the strawberry, what it tastes like yesterday. The only way you're going to know to re-experience a strawberry is to eat one. Mm -hmm. The only way you know the presence of God is when you're united with him, when he speaks to you right here and now. Mm -hmm. Yep, amen. That was a great point, Lauren. So thank you for bringing that up. That was that was great. Uh -huh. Well, that 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 came out of what that came out of what Cindy started. I yeah. just was piggybacking on that. So everybody's contributing here, for sure. Anybody else have something to share? It's uh, roaming around in your heart, something tugging at you? Let me know. topic tonight john something different for sure well, you know, i'm not gonna I, i'm trying to yeah we really would like everybody to share i've got probably three pages of stuff and even more i could probably write a book on patterns you know because it's such in every part of the bible i mean from the garden of eden which began the pattern you know god set up a pattern and we re, you know we kind of broke it uh yeah and he's trying to bring come back to that pattern again and and, and some of the things about uh you think of the word pattern, how it just flows right into the Bible in so many different aspects, like traditions. Yeah. Traditions are patterns. Mm -hmm. And Jesus was really upset about some of the traditions. Because remember, he said, you teach as commandments the traditions of men. Mm -hmm. And he said, you thereby put bondages on people. You give them tasks right. that you can handle and they can't handle. And it's interesting uh, that in Greek, the word pa uh, tradition is paradosis, and it adds up to 666 six, six in New Oh, oh wow. Yeah. See, once again, a tradition, you know, and, and just the principle is very easy. I'm going to teach it again just because it's so important. There's only two, pa there's only two sources of energy in the creation. And that's, there's two sources from which a human being can gain their energy from. One is fear, the other is love. That's all there is. Yeah. That God is love. We are born in fear. The fallen state is afraid. Adam and Eve were afraid of God. They hid themselves, yes or no? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Any human being. Now, here's a simple thing to understand all addictions and all spirituality. Simple way to do it. It's very simple. To, and to understand any addiction. Because an addiction is a pattern. <laughs> okay. It's bondage. It's when, bondage, which is a pattern. Whenever a human being senses or feels fear to any degree, the universal, never-changing response is a need to control your environment. To control mm -hmm. You have to control it, right? When you're on the airplane, yes. when you're on the airplane and you hit turbulence, you grab the seat trying to control the airplane. <laughs> or, you know, yeah. when I was a little kid, you know, you... you, you we have to control it. It's an over. It's the knee-jerk reaction. 
Now, how you control this signal? There's a lot of uh, getting a lot of windy noise. Like, oh, like I'm sorry. I think you know what? I think I went off mute. I'm sorry. Okay, yeah, yeah. You're building a bomb there or something. Like that. But when anybody feels fear, they must control it. Now, it's very simple. How you control your fear is your addiction. It's personal and it's yours. It could be drinking, it could be drugging, it could be being nice. It could be making stuff up, it could be working hard, it could be being legalistic. It doesn't matter. The obsession comes because the fear is overwhelming. So the need to control is overwhelming. Absolutely. That's your bondage. So that's why in First John it says mature. It doesn't say perfect because that's a bad translation. It says mature love casts out fear. Because fear has to do with punishment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the our, our answer to addiction, once again, it's always love. And that's one another reason why centenary prayer is so powerful and the body of Christ is powerful because us control freaks, and I'm at the top of the list there, we're all control freaks. In one way or another, okay? And that's why we get together, because we can point that out for each other. We all have blind spots, right? You know, when, when we're trying to control something, in centenary prayer, I'm trying not to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm practicing right. letting God be totally in control. He's, I let him, I even, you know, experience him controlling your breath, your heartbeat. Experience him controlling the cells growing in your body. You know, sense how much he's holding you when you're sleeping. How much he, that, that you're not trying to breathe when you're sleeping. He's allowing you to breathe. And, and so that's one of the antidotes because we have this curse, right? This body of flesh. And so, and there is also, a, you know, what happens is when we, we live in fear, I don't know if you guys do this, but I'm really king of this. I hide my fear inside. I don't share it. I, I don't want to, I don't want to, I feel like if I share it, it'll get more real. But that's the opposite of what really needs to be done. Mm -hmm. especially with physical symptoms and things like that. And, and when you hide your fear, it owns you. It mm -hmm. owns you. You become a slave to it. You can't, you know, your mood changes, your life changes, your, 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 your draw, everything. And, and, and it's like we need a friend to pluck us out of our fear and help us face it. Mm -hmm. Someone, you know, and Tina's done that for me several times. If I get into a place, I you know I suffer from depression, and anxiety. My father was so bipolar; he needed electroshock therapy. Mm. That's in my blood. That's in my DNA. But if you come to me and you quote scriptures to me, you're only going to make me worse. You need to take me by the hand and and make me walk and take me and make. You have to somehow lovingly help me face my fear. The scripture's that's, not what you need, right, John? That's not what you're. What's going to help you because you already you know, know that. You only, well, a scripture uh, can be a cold antidote. It can be the law. Right. If it's if it's not spoken through the Spirit of God. What is what does Paul say about the scripture? You guys know? He said the letter of the law kills. Mm 
But the spirit of the law like gives it. life. Remember, in, in Hebrews chapter 8, we're talking about what happened in Exodus. Remember when uh, God told Moses, right, uh, in Exodus, he said, you know, make, be careful and see to that you make everything according to the pattern shown to you on the earth. Now, the law, which is the knowledge, you know, the knowledge of good and evil without the heart of God, kills us. That's exactly what happened to Paul in Romans 7. Mm -hmm. See, it, there's, there's no energy to do it. It's only through the, through the breath of God, the spirit of God, that makes the word alive. So you, if... You came to me when I'm in that place, and if you had a scripture from the Father, from Jesus, that could possibly be helpful to me in that place. It could be comforting, because that's a breath word. That's a living word. Right, rhema. Right, a rhema. Rhema, it's got the hay in it, which... Hey, in Hebrew means spirit. You know, it's a spirit. It's the spirit. But the letter, because in every man's heart is given, the, the law is written in your heart, you see. Yep. See, that's what a conscience is. That's why everybody stands before God, judged, because God wrote the law in everybody's heart. And so it's only when we understand it's only when we understand that Jesus is the only one who kept the law. He's the only one who kept the law. That he's telling us it's okay, I kept it. Now you can accept my blessings. Now you can accept my blessings, right? But what is the old pattern, the old covenant that, that, that it says in Hebrews was passing away and, you know, was not going to work anymore? That was based, somebody is like washing dishes. Something. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> is that you, Trish? Oh, is that somebody? Um, if anybody knows me better about dishes than you, John, I don't know who it would be. <laughs> Well, yeah, I know. But we just got to make sure, you know, you, you just mute and, and unmute. You want to talk. I want everybody to talk whenever they can. But anyway, you know, the whole idea is, as and you read it the other day, right, Dave? The letter kills. Mm -hmm. and it's, but the spirit gives life. It has to be alive. And God made it that way. Why? Because he loves us. He actually likes to deal with us. You wouldn't know it, right? <laughs> he, mm -hmm. We would take the Bible and forget God in a heartbeat. And we'd be doing everything on our own understanding, you know. But mm -hmm. that's why, you know, the breath of God, the spirit of the living God, and the thing is, is that none of us we're all incomplete. We're made in God's image, but we're all incomplete. That's why we need each other. Mm -hmm. And that's the whole purpose of God making the body. And he said even the lesser parts are more important in the body. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, it's a wonderful thing. So like I said, you have to know the difference between a living word and many times if we've memorized scripture, that can be dangerous. It's a wonderful thing to bring things to remembrance, but we shouldn't use scripture because in our opinion, it fits a situation. You see what I'm saying? You guys, you yeah, know that. I, I understand what you're saying. And I'm, yeah, some that people that are very good at that. 
Yeah, that's like bringing up the I Ching or bringing up psychology or bringing up positive thinking or bringing yeah. up quantum mechanics. Yeah, it might fit the situation, but it's not the breath of God. You know, we're dead without his breath. And when, mm -hmm. when, when the breath of God came to the church, Jesus said, wait until power from on high comes. Mm -hmm. And when the Holy Spirit came, they were filled. And they began what? They began proclaiming the goodness of God and people got saved. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, the most important thing wasn't speaking in different languages. Most important thing was God was speaking through them. And he was able to say, I love you. He was able to dance with his bride, like in the movie Ghost. He was mm -hmm. able, you know, can we be that person that offers their body to God? And some of the best ways of, uh, is to wait a little bit before we speak and to pray. Whether you're praying for somebody to be healed or for a word, if you don't have a word, the kindest thing you can do is not give a word. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. Building, so building with patterns. Um, not until recently did it come across um, the feeling I had that I should talk about, you know, when I feel that the devil is he's trying to condemn me or he's trying to throw some yeah. bad, you know, throw out some bad stuff so that I feel bad. Yeah. And that's a pattern that I see him doing. And my pattern on the other side is to rebuke him in the name of Jesus mm. and to claim that he has no authority over me, you can't condemn me for anything because the blood of Jesus cleanses me. Amen. So my God is the scripture or anything of that na nature when I feel that I'm being the devil is upon me and he's trying to, you know, convict me of something or make me think something that I feel I shouldn't even be thinking about, but you know, you know where it's coming from. Yeah. So, so that's my response to the devil. Yeah. And so well, that's a pattern. Yeah. Once again, when you recognize a pattern, then it's easier to deal with. See? It's mm -hmm. the, you know, uh, the demons that are look their job. They, they can't make you lose your salvation. That's impossible. What they can do is make you ineffectual. Mm -hmm. You know, they're trying to steal your destiny. They're trying to steal your gifts and your ministry. You know, and um, that's why sometimes, you know, we, we're so easily, you know, we create our own patterns and the enemy laughs, you know, because we're, we're just, that's the way we are. We're, we're very much patterned people. Because it makes us feel good and secure, you know. But you know, sometimes, like like I said, uh, the thing we have to be careful for is methods. So, in other words, I in my early Christianity, I learned a lot of methods: how to deal with this, how to deal with that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that becomes predictable to the enemy, so the enemy knows everything I'm going to say before I say it because I have a pattern. But what we're trying to say from the beginning, I don't know if everybody was on from the beginning, Jesus had this unpredictable thing about him. He did stuff that left people with their, their mouth open. You know, it's kind of like our former president. I mean, one of his best gifts was he was unpredictable. <laughs> you know. Amen. He was unpredictable. And what I'm saying is, uh, we can become confident in the scripture, in a sense. But are we still sensitive to God? So in other words, I might have that situation, let's say Frank has, uh, and there's many times that, it, you know, what the sense is, am I turning to God for like, because our first thing should be to, to turn to the Father and see what he's got to say, you know, the type of thing. Now, I know sometimes when the devil wants to accuse me of things, it really works if I add to his list. 
here. It's like as he accuses me of this, I said, that's what you're accusing me of? Oh, I've got a lot worse than that, you know, and so that that's almost like a comical way to do it. But like I said, the minute that if I say that's the way to do it, then someone's going to adopt that as a pattern, you know what I'm saying? What we're really saying is that our walk with God, we need to kind of uh, spice, spice it up like a relationship. You know what I mean? Like sometimes, you know, our prayers can become predictable or situations can be. And I think what God likes is that whole idea of it's, you know what? It, it, it's new every day, right? The glory of God. Is, is new every day. The kingdom is new every day. When His mercies up, are new every morning, right? Good morning. Yeah. That's, a yeah. Yeah. That's the scripture I was searching for. His mercies are new every morning. Mm -hmm. Every morning. Um, like I said, we, we, you know, we, I think what we need to do is sometimes relax and we have to be honest. When we don't have a specific word from God, that's okay. Because then we can practice him holding us. We can practice him loving us. See, that's one of the, again, the values of what we call the centering prayer is that even though we may not get a specific answer immediately, we can just rest in his sovereignty. Mm -hmm. you know? And that's how, you know, you know th that's what we have to do. Now, like, uh, I can tell you hundreds of stories where we, you know, praying for people and whatnot, that God gave very bizarre words. In, in my, I'm not going to go through the experience. It's a funny one. One day I'll share it with you guys. But I, I would always experience, you know, we tend to pray sometimes out of our soul. Okay. It's our mind, emotion, and will. We have scriptures memorized. We analyze the situation, right? And, and then we have knee-jerk scriptures. We have certain responses. And I found that that I had to learn to shut up in in most situations because I know a lot of scripture. And I knew for years what I was doing was just putting puzzles together in my mind. <laughs> I know. You give me a topic, I give you a scripture. Like, you know, like you know, you tell you, you know, like like the joke man used to do. You, oh, apes! I got one on that. Lollipops! I got a joke about that. You know, I used to be the guy. Well, give me a problem. I got a scripture for you. And and I found out after a while, it was very dry. I found out there was no power. There was no change in the person. You know what I'm saying? I looked good. I looked smart. I looked like a Bible guy. But I wasn't helping anybody. <clears throat> and, you know, as he makes us less confident in our own understanding, and that's the scripture we've got to bear, Proverbs 3, 5, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your understanding. Look at the difference. Trust in the Lord with your heart. Yep. And do not lean on your understanding. See, in 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 the Bible, your heart involves your spirit. Yep. Your understanding is your soul. Yep. You see? And, and and so if we can have the humility of not to be the answer man, and I was quite good at it, like I said. I was good at it, but I was killing more people with the word than I was helping. Because sometimes when you give a person a scripture, they get more guilty than helped. <laughs> if it's not the right one. Mm -hmm. just, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So uh, what I'm saying is that that it's okay. Unless it's, John, unless it's, it's not the, unless it's not the right scripture they were needing. Because I don't, you know. It could be that. Well, you, know, you know, you miss what I'm saying, Trish, is that we need to ask the Lord. Right. And and when he says, say this, it may not even be a scripture. Believe me, I've said things to people that weren't scripture, and mm -hmm. they got set free. I once told a pastor he was suffering from a stomachache. 
Everybody prayed scriptures over him. They all did their dance. I waited because I know better. And everybody was doing, you know, by your stripes, you're healed, you, you know, you know, uh, greater is he. They, they, you got your whole bunch of healing scriptures, right? Okay. And I waited till the flood went of the perfect, what I call the professional prayers. Forgive me. <laughs> and I'm saying, God, what's the problem? I have no word. I waited. And then he said to me, tell him there's nothing he can do about it. And I said, whoa, 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 whoa. what? <laughs> and I, look, I don't say the first thing that God says to me because I'm crazy and the devil's tricky. So you got to, you know, you got to examine and ask. And I said, uh, what? And then he said it again. He said, tell him there's nothing he can do about it. I waited till God told me that three times and there was silence. And I said that to him. I said, Yo, there's nothing you can do about it. He shook. I was holding his arm. I said, nothing you can do about it. Boom! Shook again. The third time I said it, he fell on the floor laughing and we all fell on the floor in a Holy Ghost laughter that lasted two hours. <laughs> I've never experienced it like that again. And all I said was, there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> okay. Which is scriptural, <laughs> if you think about it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right? Later on, we found out that the weight of the church, some things going on in his business, all those things were churning in him and gave him his upset stomach. Mm-hmm. The Lord's answer was, nothing you can do about it. Freedom. Mm -hmm. I'll take care of it. You see? Yeah. And, and so I just wanted to tell you that I, I've learned, and I try to teach that when I can to people, don't be anxious to throw scriptures at the devil or people. Just wait a little bit. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying it's wrong. There's nothing right or wrong. I'm not going to give you another method. But I will tell you that some of the strangest things that have come into my head or whatever from God have been more effective sometimes than, than my biblical knowledge. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, anybody <laughs> have an experience like that? Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, the anything that I was saying before, yeah. um, one of the things, you know, when I feel like I'm under attack spiritually, you know, by using the name of Jesus, I can command the evil spirits to leave. And that's very powerful. And it doesn't matter what they're convicting me of. It could be them trying to give me fear or anxiety or feel that you're alone or, you know, it's not any particular thing, but you know it's an attack from the devil because... God doesn't want you to be afraid of anything. God doesn't want you to, you know, feel guilt about something that happened 20 years ago you forgave me about. You know, it's like yeah. all these types of When you know you're under attack, the name of Jesus delivers you. So I want to end my comment on that. Yeah. Wow. Amen. Amen. Not necessarily the perfect scripture. Right. Right. It's uh, what bubbles up in your spirit. When you're in, we're in union with God. That's what we must understand. We're in union with him. We don't have to seek union with him. And, and that's the whole thing with the dirty dancing thing God told me. He said... Uh, you want to dance with me, look into my eyes. I'll lead you. You know, and it's the whole idea of him leading us with his loving eyes. Mm -hmm. It's also about you don't have to get into a room that you're already in, right? Yeah. That too. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, um, 
Yeah, I get it, guys. Yeah, yeah. Anybody else have something to chime in on or want to add something or ask something? We're going to wind it up soon. There's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. To walk in the Spirit. Amen. The, uh, yeah. There's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Who put no confidence in the flesh but walk in the Spirit. It's so. Um, Right, the greatest lesson of my life about faith is putting no confidence in myself. Mm -hmm. Our faith is totally in God. We know we're going to mess up. And, you know, it's me, Tarzan, you, Jane, with God. You know, he's Tarzan with Jane. So it says, uh, my son, do not forget my teaching you, but have your heart comply with my commandments for length of days and years of life and peace. They will add to you. Do not let kindness and truth leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. So you will find favor and a good reputation in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding and all your ways. Acknowledge him. And he will make your path straight. And I like this part. We always leave it out, but I love, do not be wise in your own eyes. This is what we just said, in a sense. Turn away from evil. It will be healing to your body and refreshment to your bones. Amen. That's a beautiful mm -hmm. section of Proverbs. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, if anybody has a prayer request, You'd like to yes, I do. Yes, urgent one. Thank you, John. Um, my sister's giving up on our mother and hospice, and I'm um, offering to help her take care of her. And, you know, a door that opened up in Jersey, and uh, she doesn't want it. And uh, I don't know. Just just lift my mom up because she's not giving up, but my sister uh, is getting everything ready for, um, I don't know. It's just uh, very difficult. And uh, your, mom's I, in hospice. your mom's in hospice right now? At home, at her, at my sister's home. Oh, and okay. okay. Yeah, um, when I offered to bring her to Jersey, and she said, no, um, you, you're not um, – mom can't travel which you know I said well let me see if she can or not but she just doesn't want um, her anywhere but her house or a respite home she just doesn't want me to assume her care I don't know why it's a power thing um, and she's very being very very um, I don't know what she was getting that do, medical is there, is there any way to know what mom wants or not is she uh, too far gone for that or no she she's not too far gone but my sister's allowing all this um morphine and medicine she has like shingle symptoms that's been going on for almost a year so every time she has pain now you know it's like well pump her up with more morphine so my mom is getting confused she does have a little dementia going on but no i talked to my mom and, she, and i said mom are you do you want to you know keep going i know you're in some pain she said no the pain goes away she said, I'm not ready to, to go. I'm, I'm very, you know. That's important. Yeah, yeah. But she, my sister's tired of the care, and she doesn't yeah. respect no. that another family member. And I said, there's an open door in Jersey. I said, you know, and Daniel um, hardly ever sees her now, and she doesn't care. I don't know why, and it's just, um, yeah. And when I got the clearance to travel through hospice, through a travel, um, voucher my sister told hospice oh don't take any more calls from my sister it's like wait a minute i thought you gave me medical power of attorney like what so i don't know whether she's just getting really so stressed that, that her mind yeah. isn't you know but well, that's, that's a tough situation a family situation like that mm -hmm. yeah if anybody uh feels led to pray they can pray for that situation right now and be appreciated thank you jesus and then i do have to go thank you 
Lord, I pray that my sister will come to know you because I know her. Um, she doesn't respond to anything of the faith, and um, I think that's a big part of it. But um, please be in control, and if there's any divine intervention that you can do before Sunday when mom is getting picked up by the transport to this home, um, please intervene. And if it's not your will, I don't want to interfere with that. Yes, God. Uh, thank, thank you for keeping me strong and um, still doing what I can to take care of our mother. And um, yeah. thank we you for all you, this prayer work. We ask you to give Trish understanding. We ask you, that she is the one who can receive. We ask you to open the eyes of her heart. We ask you that there is a dream, a word, information coming mm -hmm. from the Father that you would give her the peace that she needs. Mm -hmm. That you would prepare her heart to that that, she, that you that she would let you live in her, so that you can affect the situation, Lord. That she all she can do is give herself to your presence, to your indwelling. We, I pray that she would have that open heaven and that, the, 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 either, like I said, from a dream or revelation, something would come because this very tough situations, life and death in these times and the fear and the anguish between family members and saved, not saved. Lord, only you could navigate this. Mm -hmm. so, when we ask you, your servant, that's your servant. That's your in into this situation, Lord. And may Chris be used to comfort her mother with the glory of God. May the glory of God come into this situation for her mother's sake. He said that the death of the righteous is very precious to you, Lord. Mm -hmm. So we stand back in awe and we honor what you're going to do, Lord. But we once again open the eyes of her heart to give mm -hmm. her understanding. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Amen. And Jesus. I appreciate all of you, prayer warriors. And Amen. thank you for the uh, trips we have. Yes. Um, I just wanted to um, pray for God just to heal your heart because I know your heart is breaking over this. Yes, yeah, I just you. ask Lord that you would just heal her heart, and and I That's just right. feel like God just honors you. That you know He commands us to honor our mothers and fathers, and yes. um, He's blessing. He's gonna bless you because that's your heart is to honor your mom and to do what's best for her, and mm -hmm. and God sees that, and He just is so pleased with you for that. Amen. And that, that's all. Uh, amen. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you, Cindy. <laughs> Lord, I just pray in the name of Jesus, if there's any misunderstandings or any past hurts, Lord God, you know, either Trish or Mr. Lord, that are causing division in their yes, family, Lord. Lord, that you heal that up with the balm of Gilead, Almighty God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Them with love, Lord God. Mm -hmm. Help them to take down their guards, mm -hmm. Lord God. Just Thank touch you. their heart and soften them up, Lord God, yeah. so that yeah. they can yes, be yeah. Love, Lord God, you. that you would be honored and glorified, Lord God, in that family. And I ask these things in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Yes, there is division in our family. I think it's in every family. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, thank you. And that's a pattern, John. That's a pattern, yeah. too. Yeah, it's a pattern. Right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Love is the end. Amen.
I'm so forgiving my sister, even though she's hurt me. And you know what? I just keep loving her and forgiving her. But it's just so, it's hard sometimes. It's a love hate thing. You know, everybody can relate to that. But um, Amen. yeah. Trish, are you blessing her? Bless her, Trish. Bless your sister too. Yeah. Yeah. I... Yeah. Oh, but, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Well, she is. She is blessed. I don't. I don't know if she realizes how much she's blessed. Am I doing it? I. I don't know. I can't answer that. But I. I know my sister's blessed. She. To be on. You can speak spiritual blessings over her. She's not blessed with those. She won't Both accept right. it. She's an agnostic. No. She no, but want. not. Not to. Oh, her. you mean not around her? Not around her, you mean? No, no just speaking right. um, into the atmosphere over her. Yeah. Like, bless those that persecute us and just, you know, yeah. mm. that type of thing. Okay, yeah, thank you. I needed to hear that. Yep. Amen. Spiritual That's blessings is what she needs, yeah? Yes. And you can, you can pray that. We can pray that for everybody. Mm -hmm. Because your sister has a spirit from God. He mm -hmm. wants to unite mm -hmm. with her. Yeah. No human being is without a spirit from God. We have the seed. We all have the right. seed. Right. So you can mm -hmm. pray along the lines of that. and You know, you don't have to like her to pray and love her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, we're just, so di we're just so different. You know, well, obviously. You, you have you know, that's, that's, the, that's the way it is. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, it seemed to me that Jesus didn't like a couple of people, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and a couple of people didn't like him. That's my opinion. He has my opinion. He That's wasn't right. Funny. <laughs> right. A lot of people didn't like him either. No, I was just cool. gonna, yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Cindy, I don't know you. I think you're new to the group, but. Um, uh, I hear yeah. you over the phone. <laughs> yeah. And Frank and Mary, too. I've been, yeah. Just thank you, everybody. I'm going to disconnect. And um, I, yeah, we're, I love you guys. And I'm sorry I'm yeah. not faithful as on Sundays. It's just been really difficult lately. So, this is you. necessary. You come when you come. come yeah. I know. Just yeah. Trust God for everything. Yeah. Thank you. Amen. Okay. Good night. Okay. Good night. Yeah, we're going to head out, too. All righty. Sounds good. All right. nice. See you next week. Thanks for the message. Peace to you all. Thank you. Peace. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.